Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this very cool looking coin right here. We're going to be going over bass relief, sculpting, knife brush, and a lot of different techniques so that you too can create this very cool prop. And in another video, in next week probably, we're going to go through the process of making this a game asset. So, let's go! Very well, guys. So in order to create our own very coin right here, we're going to be using a couple of techniques inside of ZBrush. And the first thing I noticed from a lot of this reference that we have right here from ancient coins is that they're not perfectly symmetrical, right? Like they're not perfectly circular. So let's go here to ZBrush. I'm going to start with a... Uh, bu 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 I'm going to start with a cylinder. So I'm going to go cylinder 3D, just uh, draw the cylinder out. There we go. I'm going to make this a poly mesh 3D. And with R, I'm going to scale it down like this. Once it's at scale, as you can see, it's not facing forward. So let's make this face forward right there. And uh, I'm going to control D a couple of times to make this smooth. And as soon as it's smooth, I'm going to dynamesh this with a high resolution, something like 512 and dynamesh and saying no to the freezing subdivision levels. That way we have a clean, smooth dynamesh cylinder ready to start. So one of the first brushes that I want to use is the knife brush. Control shift and then we're going to go over here. We're going to select the knife curve to start removing, as you can see right here, a couple of bits and pieces from the silhouette of our coin. Again, this is going to make it so that it's not perfectly round and it's not perfectly symmetrical, so it should make it a little bit more interesting. There we go. That looks really interesting. Now, I want to bevel some of these corners, and there's a lot of ways to do it. I want to do this manually to give this sort of like old, uh, like damaged uh, coin effect. So I'm going to go to uh, my symmetry, and as you can see right now, we have symmetry on X. If we go to transform, we can change that symmetry from X to Z, so we have back and forth of the object. And now, with a very simple trim dynamic, we can trim some of the borders. Not all of the borders, but some of the borders will be nice to get a, a, an interesting effect. So some of them are going to be like heavily beveled, like this guy's right here. And some of them are going to be just like like fairly, fairly, like almost nothing. And again, that's going to give me a really clean, nice variation over the whole thing. There we go. We clean right there, right there, right there. And we just keep adding this like damaged effect to the whole border. Now, I do want to do the whole process with this coin, so I'm still deciding whether this video is going to be a long one or a short one, or if we're going to divide it into multiple parts. I think multiple parts might be the way to go. So in this part, we're going to focus on the high poly, because otherwise it's going to be too many topics. And I actually want you guys to try it along. Maybe you can showcase your results on the Discord channel as well. So yeah, there we go. We got a nice, like interesting border right here for our coin. If again we take a look at the references, you're gonna see that most coins have like a border or some like something like encompassing the whole thing. And we got of course heads and tails. So I'm gonna to go to Ooh, what happened here? Did we rotate this? I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. No, wait a second. There we go. So I'm gonna to go to the back part right here. I'm gonna to go to C plugin again. And I'm gonna change something here. Instead of using symmetry, let's go to um, sorry, uh, transform. Instead of using Z symmetry, I'm going to use a radial symmetry. And what this is going to do, as you can see, is I'm going to be able to draw on multiple parts of the element a lot faster. So what I want to do here is I want to draw like a like sort of like spiral rope effect or maybe like a chain. I think a chain might be interesting. So let's do like one shackle. Actually, let's let's make this a little bit more. I'm going to go to transform and on the radial count, let's change this to 16. So we got more of them. I'm going to do the first shackle right here. Because it's supposed to be like a coin. We're going to be using Thyros, one of my favorite characters that I did a couple of years ago. And uh, it's supposed to, he's supposed to be coming from a Avernus. So, so we're going to do this sort of like chain effect. Careful here. We don't want to like make this too big. There we go. That looks really nice. Then we can even go with our Damien Standard, for instance, and just carve in a little bit of an extra detail there on the chain so that it looks like uh, like we're actually going in. If they're too high, we can use our trim dynamic to flatten them up a little bit. I don't want to flatten them too much because I'm actually thinking about 3D printing this. And you know, you guys know that when we 3D print, one of the things that we want to take into account is exaggerating details a little bit more than what we usually would because uh, the 3D printer will make details look uh, very, very soft. So if we go a little bit more extreme than normal, that's going to give us a nice detail. Now, Avernus is a sort of like evil plane, things like that. So I think like adding some, I don't know, like interesting like fire thingies right here, 
pointing towards the center might be an interesting thought or thing. Let's add some circles right there again to just like finish the, the design on this part of the coin. And for the center, we need to decide what kind of thing we want. So Thyrus is a barbarian. I think having like an axe or something be the symbol because remember, usually in coins, it's heads and tails, right? So heads is going to be his face and then tails is going to be like something different. So I'm going to go transform. Let's remove the radial symmetry. And actually, let's also remove the C symmetry because I just want to be able or I just want to be drawing on this like back part right now. I'm going to press a symmetry again, actually, but I, I want to have a symmetry on X. There we go. So we have the symmetry back here only. And I'm going to be using masking. So in the newest C uh, like Seabrush versions, there's a very cool thing where we can draw a silhouette. I'm going to draw like an X silhouette right here. Let's do a double spike there on the, on the silhouette. Let's go right here, over here and close with a little spike. There we go. So we can do this. And if we go to the masking options, there's a new option here on the uh, masking that's all region. So if we do all region, it bloop, automatically fills everything up, which is really, really cool. This is a one of the newest versions of Seabrush. I think 2023 is when they like instated this new effect. And now with Control and, um, and Alt, I'm cleaning up some of the shapes to generate something, you know, like the silhouette, like the cleaner silhouette of the of the X. We might even like want to go here on the inside and generate some interesting negative shapes here as well. I'm not sure though. Kind of like this. Let's do one, two, three, and then together. Something like this, I think looks looks interesting. Like. And like interesting decoration and this is the part where you can spend so 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 much time right like right now i'm trying to make this as interesting and as brief as possible but you can spend a lot of time right here so i'm going to control d uh the whole thing or actually not control d i'm just going to invert the mask and we're going to go all the way down to the formation right here and we're going to use a little bit of inflate balloon so we're going to inflate balloon and as you can see this is going to push the whole thing up in a very nice way, in a very like nice soft way, which is gonna give us a, a cool effect right there for like a like a symbol or something. Now if we take a look at the elements right here, you can see that very often we get like symbols and letters and things like that. So let's do a little bit of a cryptic message right here. Uh, on this side, let's 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 see how write 2023 in Roman numerals. So it's MMXX3. Okay. So we're gonna have Right here is going to be M, M, X, X, and then a three. So we're going to have one, two, three over here. And then over here, I'm going to write uh, my initials. So A, L. And then up here, I don't know, we can do another like X, M, and then like a, oh, let's do like an A right here. For, for like a baroness, right? So something like that. Again, we might want to use our trim dynamic on that one to, to just push it a little bit in. And I can definitely feel like we're missing a little bit of geometry. I'm going to control D to give myself a little bit more resolution, or we can increase the resolution on the uh, dynamics as well. That's almost 2 million polygons now. Now on the front view, I'm going to go uh, transform again. Let's go to our Z radial symmetry transform and we should have this one right here again let's grab create build up and that's it so on the front i want to have uh like a band again if we take a look at the where are my coins those are not my coins there we go let's go back there we go so you can see that we have again like uh like this like silhouettes like on this one right here we got ladders and everything and we got like a nice border on the very very border so i'm gonna use like an inverted effect right here to kind of like create like an interesting weave. And then in the center, kind of create like a, like a spiral going into itself. So it's going to be like a U shape right here. And then it goes up, then it goes down and then it goes right there. See that? And as you can see, as we finish this, it's kind of like an, like an infinite spiral that just like weeps into each other. 
and as you can see, since we have uh, like symmetry turned off, there's going to be certain points where, or since this thing is not like perfectly symmetrical, there's going to be some points where this thing does not match. I kind of want to add something like that over here as well. So I'm just going to add some like dots, I think. Nah, that's too much. That's too much. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Cool. Now, for the character, this is where the where the fun starts. I'm going to open uh, my character here, which is a Thyros. Some of you guys know him from one of my old tutorials back in the day. And, uh, well, not back in the day. This was last year. And uh, we're going to be using Thyros to get the face out of him. So we're going to go Assets. And I got, like, a decimated version of him right here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use another feature inside of Seabridge that's called Bass Relief. Bass Relief is the thing that we normally see in coins. And one of the things that we can do is we can actually extract information, e extract the Bass Relief information from in every, any subtool that you want and then project that into your character. So I kind of want to like do a three-quarter view of the character, so something like this. Or actually, let's do a side view of the character, so something like this. I'm going to go to my subtools because right now there's a lot of subtools active. Let's deactivate everything except for the for the character right here. And where's the beard? Because we might need the beard. There's the mustache. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. There we go. So let's hide this. Turn this on. Body bandages. Utilities belt. I can't find the beard. It's a lot of subtools. This guy has like 70, I don't know how many subtools or something. That's the axe. That's the necklace. This was a version where I didn't, hadn't renamed things just yet. There we go. Is that one? No, that's the fur. Where the hell is it? There we go. Here we go. Perfect. I was going to grab this guy and I want to turn that one off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to frame our character so we get like roughly the, the shot that we're looking for, which is this one right here. And if we go to alpha, we can select the bass relief and just make bass relief. And what's going to happen is it's going to capture the information of our document and it's going to create a alpha right here. This one that we have, which looks very, very nice. So now the only thing I need to do is go back to my coin go back to the coin right here. I'm going to use my mask circle perfect, mark mask perfect circle or whatever to mask this inner area right there. There we go. Invert the mask and then with mask square or mask rect, I'm going to mask this back part right here so that only this part is visible. Let's grab our standard brush, change our drag rig and change our alpha to the bass release alpha. And of course, on the transforms, we're going to disable symmetry. So now when we drag this, look at that, beautiful. We can just drag the face of Thyros, something like that looks really, really cool. And that, that's it. Now the only problem, as you can see right here, it's a little bit like aggressive on the element. Now the cool thing is, since we have this thing masked, we might be able to just push this in. Yes, it's going to give us a border over here. So we could like potentially mask things out. You can also use this adjust last option, but as you can see by doing that, we do lose a little bit of the of the like sharpness of the of the image. So I don't want to do that too much. And I would rather actually here what we can do is let's mask out like this. There we go. That's much better. And now with W, I'm just gonna push this in. So that we can still keep like a very nice like form on the character without really modifying a lot of this part. And even that line right there, it's going to be good for like a, like depth. If we dynamesh now, we should get a, a nice effect right there. I'm still going to like smooth things out there on the border a little bit. There we go. And dynamesh to make sure that we don't have any issues whatsoever. It's a very deep line, but again, I feel like that could potentially be quite useful. If we want to fill it in, remember that you can use clay buildup and just like fill that area a little bit. And when we dynamesh or inflate, inflate is another option. Another thing that I'm thinking of is going back a couple of steps right here before we push this in. And I'm going to mask with mask pen. I'm going to mask that border. A little bit cleaner like that. There's not much we can mask here, to be honest. And then now if we push this in, 
the border shouldn't be that bad. There we go, Dynamesh. And that's just a matter of cleaning that up a little bit. Cool. So I'm going to use Clay Buildup again. Let's go back to our like square alpha. And over here, I'm also going to write the date. So it's going to be, it was M, M, um, X, X3. There we go. We can call this, we can write his name. Let's try doing this in a sort of like ancient way. Oh, right out of the space right there, kind of like in, in high school. Did you guys ever do those projects where you were drawing on a, like a big uh, piece of paper and you're like, ah, right out of the space. There we go. And let's do my initials over here. And we can just add like, I don't know, like interesting symbols, like a little triangle right here. Something that kind of looks or resembles a signature. Just to fill this gap, right? Like, especially if we take a look at this, there's usually a lot of things going forward so so all of this could be just like random runes and things going around the whole the whole section there we go so now now that we have a really good coin right here something that looks really interesting we can start adding a little bit more details right so i'm going to use trim dynamic and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start like removing or or like damaging a little bit more of this border so that we don't have any like weird effects right there this is without symmetry so we're going to start breaking symmetry for this particular piece. Back here, I'm going to use clay buildup. And for instance, we can start adding some like corrosion or damage on, on certain elements again to, to break up the silhouette and make sure that it's not as perfect. Now, we've talked about other things such as layers before. Here's where layers can really, really work. I'm going to show you a, a little trick right here. So if you've been watching this for the past 16 minutes, leave a comment. Say, hey, I'm here. I'm still learning. I'm still improving, and um, and let me know what the what your favorite tool so far has been. Remember also that we have a very cool Discord channel. So if you were watching and you're not on the Discord, you're missing out. A lot of cool stuff over there. There we go. So I'm gonna go to my uh, surface modifier over here, and we can use some noise. So on the noise, I'm gonna start increasing the noise scale quite a bit, and then I'm gonna modify the curvature here on the element. Now I'm gonna bring the noise down. Actually. A little bit higher and look at that we get this very very cool sort of like damaged effect on the whole thing so i'm gonna do it kind of like soft i to have some harsh effects there we go that looks really nice i'm gonna hit okay now this is just a preview this noise that we're seeing right now is just a preview of the noise when we want to apply it we just hit apply to mesh right here it's gonna inflate certain things a little bit so make sure to to tweak them around and i'm gonna use stream dynamic again to start cleaning up some of the elements right here especially here on this part like that ridge that was created and even though we have this noise i always like to go in and clean certain areas uh, we talked about this quite a bit in my premium courses about the rest areas that you can um that you need to give your audience so they're not always being like bombarded by information let's go to our daemon standard and just like a couple like scratches here and there it's a good way to to add some visual interest to the whole coin. There we go. Just throw in a very quick gold color and look at that. That one's already looking quite nice. So this is a small series that I want to do and I'm planning a bigger series for next week. So stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe because we're going to be doing a whole asset from beginning all the way to end. And uh, this one, I'm going to stop right here. In the next video, when we come back to this coin, uh, we're going to be doing some like nice texturing inside of Substance Painter. I'm also going to show you how we could retopologize this character or this coin very, very quickly. So yeah, hopefully you liked it so far, my friends. Please let me know in the comments. I always like to know what else you guys want to learn about this amazing 3D world. And if you want to check our premium channel or our premium course, it's also going to be available here in the description. You can learn about sculpture, modeling, rendering, texturing, and all sorts of things. So yeah, that's it, my friends. See you on all of our other uh, socials. And if you're watching this on Friday morning, we're going to be playing Baldur's Gate very, very soon in Twitch. So make sure to tune in as well. That's it, my friends. Thank you very much. I'll see you back on the next one.